What's up, everybody? Matt Kajeski here, back again with the Odd Shopper channel, talking some college basketball betting ahead of Tuesday, March the 29th. No NCAA tournament, but we have the NIT, and we have two games to get to. Before we get started, make sure to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you know when this and all other content goes live. We're also brought to you today by BetMGM, and great offer for those of you new to the platform. What you're going to do is make a $10 wager on any college basketball game of your choosing. Then if either team in that game hits a three-point shot, you're going to turn that $10 into $200. Make sure to check out that MGM, and we will take a look at their offerings a little later in the program. Diving into today's games. Kicking things off, we're going to talk St. Bonaventure versus Xavier, two teams that perhaps should have been in the tournament Xavier underachieved a little more than St. Bonaventure this year. They finished 21 and 13 so far and a couple of really tough losses preventing them from getting in the tournament. They parted ways with their coach. They now have an interim coach and they're a team. I think we can actually grab some value with here plus one and a half plus two in some spots against the Bonnies. A couple advantages right away, offensive efficiency, defensive efficiency, rebounding and particularly rebounding. These all suit Xavier. Xavier's a team that plays with a lot of size behind Nunji and Fremantle. They're 54th in rebounding. St. Bonaventure's 230th. You look at metrics like effective height, the size of players actually on the floor. Xavier's 21st in effective height. St. Bonaventure is 262nd. We know the Bonnies are going to play with five guys. They use the same five-man rotation, and they play almost every single minute. The only player who has a lot of size on that team is Osin Osanai. And if he gets in foul trouble, which has been a problem for him in two of the last three games, that could be a way that Xavier really exploits the St. Bonaventure team. Now, before we move on here, should mention Xavier will be playing without Paul Scruggs. He is out for the remainder of the season, however, however far Xavier goes in this tournament. But the Xavier team has a lot of depth. We already mentioned the players in the front court with Nunji and Fremantle. But they've had some players that have come off the bench and given them a spark. We all know Colby Jones, but even Dewan Odom, has played well, especially in the periphery, taking over the point guard duties that Scruggs vacates. So catching two points with Xavier, this is something I think is a very sharp bet here. Ken Palm had this minus two in favor of Xavier. So does it come down to Paul Scruggs being worth four points to the spread here? In my opinion, he is not. So I will back Xavier plus two, plus one and a half, wherever you can find them. Second game, we have Washington State taking on Texas A&M. We all saw the run Texas A&M went on in the SEC tournament only to lose in the championship to Tennessee. Washington State, a little bit different team, much stronger overall, but they're a team that had run incredibly slow and cold during the regular season. This team has 14 losses. Nine of them occurred by single digits, another one by 10 points. This team had only lost two games by a margin north of 10 points all season long. So they were in almost every single game they lost, just ran incredibly poorly in terms of negative regression overall with the record. But you look at these teams, Washington State holds edges everywhere again. They're 94th in offensive efficiency, a and 151st. Defense, Washington State actually 32nd, a and 36th. Rebounding, Washington State is 61st, and Texas a and is 136th. You look at metrics like effective height. Washington State holds very clear advantages here. 26th in effective height. Texas A&M is 275th. Now, solid competition for both of these teams, but there's a couple of reasons. Catching points with Washington State makes some sense here. Again, they are going to be plus one and a half, plus two in some spots, trying to find the twos if possible. But Muhammad Gay returned from injury. In the last three games, he's now played 9, 13, and then 30 minutes once he had that full week's rest. So it's positive to see Muhammad Gay going back to his regular role. We saw previously TJ Bamba's a guy who's played injured during the regular season. Only eight minutes in their last game due to foul trouble. But Deshaun Jackson's another player that's come back and returned from injury. 21 minutes in the last three games for him. This Washington State team has been incredibly banged up throughout the year, and they're finally healthy. Now looking at what they do well... They are going to be able to exploit some matchups inside, I believe, against this Texas A&M defense. Texas A&M is very strong, but Washington State, they're finally healthy in the front court. You look at how the defense stacks up for Texas A&M. They're really good at defending on the perimeter, 54th in three-point defense. They're 100th in interior defense. So I think this is a spot where maybe the front court of Washington State 
can get it done here. We know what Washington State likes to do. They shoot a ton of threes. They're due for some negative regression after shooting very poorly this year. So I think overall catching points with this team is going to be solid here. You also have a team in Texas A&M that turns the ball over a lot. And then Washington State is 63rd in the country in forcing turnovers. So that is something that could be an issue here when we get down the stretch for this Texas A&M team. Going to bet MGM, looking at the current lines, we have Washington State plus one and a half against Texas A&M. Xavier plus one and a half against St. Bonaventure. Would look for plus twos if you can get them. I think these lines might move, so maybe this is just something you wait on until later in the day. But overall, if one and a half ends up being the number you take, still comfortable with those. We're on the dogs. Let me know who you like in the comment sections. I am Matt Gajewski. I'm on Twitter at Matt underscore Gajewski. Thank you for watching, and we'll catch you again next time.